mice with Alzheimer's disease. While searching for new methods of treating dementia, scientists from California have discovered a molecule that restored lost cognitive functions and memory in mice with an equivalent of Alzheimer's disease. If the molecule works similarly in human studies, it could mean a revolutionary new therapy for Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia and one of the biggest global health problems. According to estimates, it currently affects about 55 million people worldwide, but researchers emphasize that if no cure is discovered, by the middle of the century there could be over 150 million people with the disease. Alzheimer's disease affects older people, most often after the age of 65, but it begins much earlier. More and more people are falling ill with it, and this is related to the increasing life expectancy. Unfortunately, it has now become the fifth most common cause of death worldwide. This disease is associated with the accumulation of beta amyloid and another protein called tau in the brain. Scientists currently believe that the disease emerges from both genetic and environmental factors, although the exact processes that cause it remain a mystery. While the causes of the disease are unclear, it is clear that the aging process leads to changes that drive its development. Current treatments can slow the progression of the disease and alleviate its symptoms, which can include memory loss, especially learning and remembering new information, cognitive deficits, such as difficulty with reasoning and complex tasks, recognizing familiar objects and people, and changes in personality or behavior. However, new research offers hope for a better, more effective treatment. Scientists at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, have identified a very promising molecule that, in studies on mice, restored cognitive function and memory in rodents with a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. The results and a description of the study were published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The most popular approach in recent years is to rid the brains of Alzheimer's patients of harmful beta amyloid plagues and tau protein. This is also the case with recently approved drugs by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, such as lecanemab and aducanumab, which slow the decline of mental abilities of patients. However, they do not restore cognitive functions or memory. They leave the brain, which may be free of plagues, but all the pathological changes in the neuronal circuits and mechanisms are not corrected said Dr. Istvan Modi, the lead author of the study. The molecule identified and synthesized by scientists from UCLA was named DDL920. It does not remove beta amyloid and tau protein deposits from the brain. It uses a new approach to improving cognitive functions of the brain and memory. The brain turns on and off different functions by sending electrical signals at different frequencies. Among these signals are so-called gamma oscillations. These are waves with the highest frequency. They play a major role in many cognitive processes and working memory. Patients with early symptoms of Alzheimer's disease have been shown to have reduced gamma oscillations. Some studies suggest that aberrations in gamma waves may be an early biomarker of Alzheimer's disease. Others have tried using 40 Hz transcranial magnetic stimulation to stimulate gamma oscillations to restore memory. As Modi said in a press release, it dissolved some of the beta amyloid and tau protein deposits in the brain, but it did not show significant improvement in cognitive function. The UCLA researchers tried to boost gamma oscillations in a different way, using a molecule called DDL920. It targets a group of frequently firing neurons that are key to generating gamma waves and, therefore, memory and cognitive functions. However, 
certain chemical receptors in these neurons that respond to a chemical messenger known as GABA inhibit the gamma oscillations that these neurons synchronize. The molecule the researchers identified, DDL920, acted on these receptors, allowing neurons to maintain stronger gamma waves. DDL920 enhances gamma oscillations and, unlike current FDA-approved treatments that focus on removing beta amyloid and tau plagues, works on brain circuits in a different way. The approach offers a new perspective on improving cognition and memory in Alzheimer's disease. To test whether DDL920 would improve memory and cognition, the researchers used mice genetically modified to exhibit symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. They gave DDL920 orally twice daily for two weeks to three month old Alzheimer's mice. The control group also included mice with a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease, but also healthy mice. They were given an inactive compound. All mice underwent basic cognitive testing in the Barnes Maze a circular platform with a variety of visual cues and a dozen false exits and only one true exit. The maze is used to assess spatial orientation and measure how well the rodents can learn and remember the exit location. It doesn't take very long for healthy mice to do this. After treatment, the rodents with the Alzheimer's disease mouse model were able to recall the exit location at a similar rate as healthy animals given an inactive compound. They also showed no abnormal behaviors, hyperactivity, or other visible side effects. Untreated rodents with the Alzheimer's disease equivalent took significantly longer to find the exit. While the treatment was effective in mice, much more work is needed to determine whether it will be safe and as effective in humans. If it does, DDL920 could prove to be a revolutionary treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Moreover, it may also have implications for the treatment of other diseases and conditions that are associated with reduced gamma oscillation, such as depression, schizophrenia, and autism spectrum disorders. Video games can have a positive impact on mental health. A study conducted during the COVID-19 pandemic found that video games can have a positive impact on mental health. However, moderation is needed, as playing too much every day can reduce well-being. Previous research on the effects of video games on mental health has been inconclusive. Some studies of regular, long-term gaming have suggested that gaming can lead to symptoms of addiction. In adolescents, it can lead to social isolation and, in some cases, aggressive behavior. In 2019, the World Health Organization included games disorder on a refreshed list of the International Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems. Other studies have suggested that such findings are exaggerated. Many of the studies on which the WHO based its decision were unable to prove a causal relationship when it came to mental health outcomes. To that end, most studies were conducted in controlled environments, which may have influenced the results. Although this type of entertainment is often maligned, it does seem to improve well-being. At least that's according to a new study published in the journal Nature Human Behavior. In the study, scientists used the COVID-19 pandemic and its associated lockdown to investigate the effects of video games on a large number of people outside the laboratory. The study, conducted from December 2020 to March 2022 on a group of people aged 10 to 69, found that video games can have a positive effect on mental health. What's more, even the mere fact of owning a gaming console seemed to increase life satisfaction and reduce stress. About 3 billion people around the world play video games. During the pandemic, that number has skyrocketed. In Japan, it even led to a shortage of gaming consoles. At the time, 
a lottery system was created to randomly select consumers who could purchase a console as soon as one became available. The research team realized that the pandemic presented a good opportunity to test the effects of video games on homebound gamers. The researchers created questionnaires to measure mental health, asking about the amount of time spent playing, their stress levels, and their life satisfaction. They also collected data on the socio-economic status of the participants. The researchers surveyed 8,192 people who entered a lottery. Of these, 2,323 won the chance to buy a console. Participants who had the chance to buy a console experienced a decrease in stress and reported greater life satisfaction than respondents who did not win the lottery. The mental health benefits of owning a console were more pronounced among men, avid gamers, and households without children. Further analysis of the questionnaires showed that playing video games for up to three hours a day seemed to improve mental health, but playing for longer periods of time slightly decreased well-being. Each additional hour of play decreased life satisfaction. Andrew Probilski, a psychologist who studies the effects of video games on the mental health of gamers at the University of Oxford in the UK, says the study is the first step toward demonstrating a cause and effect relationship between gaming and mental health benefits. However, he adds that conducting the experiment during the pandemic may have enhanced the mental health benefits of gaming, since people's mental health was generally poorer during that time and there were fewer opportunities to engage in other activities. The pandemic also brought changes in social, professional and lifestyle behaviors, which could have also left a mark on the surveys. In addition, the study focused mainly on general gaming habits, not distinguishing between different types of games, which may have different effects on mental health. In addition, participants chose to enter a lottery, so it was not a random sample. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee